What is up guys, welcome back to episode 4 of Inside the Intervals Now, um, it's been a while since the last podcast And all I can say is that it has been a crazy off-season in July This month has been probably, this has probably been the best free agency Since probably in the last 5-10 to 10 years It has been the best one, honestly And all I can say is that there are a lot of teams now who I thought they weren't contenders, but now they are coming to a point where they are contenders. So, with that being said, I'm sure you guys have seen the latest of things that's happening in the NBA, and I'm just going to go through some of the things as well. And um, instead of making this a, a podcast by myself, part two will be with myself and, of course, my friends. They'll be here. Hopefully, we can get this done because... There's way too much to talk about and I wanted to talk about it sooner but I said I'd rather wait and actually uh, discuss one part now and then the second part we actually get into it. So um, as time has gone on, I'm sure everybody looked at Kawhi Leonard as the main, the main off-season guy, as the main guy to be traded, well not traded, to sign with whatever team you wanted to sign with and of course he signs with the Los Angeles Clippers for a four-year deal, 142 million. Second on that list is Kevin Durant. He signs to the Brooklyn Nets for a four-year deal as well, 164 million. Kyrie Irving uh, signs to the Brooklyn Nets as well, a four-year, 141 million. Kemba Walker, four years, 141 million. Clay Thompson, he resigns with the Golden State Warriors. He is staying, 190 million deal. Four years. Kristaps Porzingis has officially agreed to a five-year, 158 million deal. Jimmy Butler he goes on to sign with the Miami Heat, 142 million, four years. Tobias Harris he resigns with the uh, Philadelphia 76ers. I think that says 180 million deal, which is five years. Chris Middleton resigns with the Bucks, 178 million, five years. Nikolai Vucevic, uh, a four-year deal, four year of 100 million, same thing. Most of these uh, deals are actually pretty much four years, and I'm just going off this with this list as I've come to do some research about this. But yeah, um, D'Angelo Russell signs with the Golden State Warriors for four years, 117 million. Malcolm Brogdon. Signs with the Indiana Pacers, uh, uh, what is it? Four year deal, 85 million. JJ Reddick, he signs with the New Orleans Pelicans and he's got a two year, 26.5 million deal. Demarcus Cousins, uh, he agrees with the Lakers to a one year deal, 3.5 million. Al Horford signs with the Philadelphia 76ers, four years, 109 million. Bojan Bogdanovic signs with the Utah Jazz, yeah, Utah Jazz, right? Yep, Utah Jazz, four year, 73 million deal. Julius Randle signs with the Knicks, three year deal, 63 million. Brooke Lopez resigns with the Bucks. 52 million deal, four years. DeAndre Jordan signs with the Brooklyn Nets, four year deal, 40 million. And last but not least, Harrison Barnes uh, re signs with the Sacramento Kings, uh, 85 million deal, four years. So, yeah, these are the top 20 guys who were on, who were basically free agents and re signed with their teams. Now, um, of course, you're looking at some of these teams who are you know definitely contenders and i think will be definitely contenders for the future uh some teams some of the teams are not really too much contenders but now that they've got acquired certain players and hopefully they can they can become uh contenders now with all these signings going on it has been a crazy off season now Kawhi Leonard has actually pushed the button for all of these trades to happen, for all these trades and signings to happen, Kawhi Leonard has done it. 
he's actually done it. This is pretty much the era of duos. Because not only did the Clippers get Kawhi Leonard, did not only did he sign with them, they also traded for Paul George from the Oklahoma City Thunder. Whilst doing that, the Oklahoma City Thunder traded Russell Westbrook to the Houston Rockets for CP3 and a couple of first round draft picks. Now, it's crazy because that's just this this whole this whole this whole signing has caused a lot of mayhem. A lot of mayhem has been going on. Now I want to get into a little bit about uh, the CP3 and Russell Westbrook trade because I feel like uh, that's one of the trades that I found, I was, I found pretty peculiar, but at the same time, interesting. You know, a lot of people are talking about Russell Westbrook and saying, oh, you know, he's not he's not going to do anything to that team. He's a bull hog, just like James Harden. When Russell Westbrook has the best, he's had the best season of assists this year. So... Before people start saying certain things, just look at the stats and look at what he's done and look who he's brought to the games. Now, I don't know how it's going to work in Houston over there, but they're going to have to find a way. They're going to find a way. Definitely going to have to find a way because now it is, it's made it, uh, the Western Conference again this year is very strong. Now, for the East to become stronger, of course, certain teams are going to have to offer a lot more than just max contracts, they go off. They have to offer at least someone, a team that is willing to win. Now, I get, you know, that I get why Paul George traded from OKC to to the LA Clippers. Him and Kawhi are pretty much the best defenders in the league. One of both of them are pretty much the best defenders in the league, and to be on a defensively equipped team like the Clippers, and to have Doc Rivers as their coach. Is a championship in their in their eyes? Can they can they honestly go all the way? The Clippers, I think it's possible. I think it's possible. And there was one thing that Kawhi said in the um, in the press conference, basically talking about the um, his trading and stuff, his signing and everything. Is well, the Clippers have played better basketball in LA for the last how many years? And it's the truth. It is the truth. Back when the Clippers had um, CP3 and Blake Griffin. DeAndre Jordan, JJ Redick, it's the truth. We have, the Lakers, we have sunk. We have sunk. But now that we've got Anthony Davis, which is one of the trades I wanted to kind of talk about as well. Now that we've got Anthony Davis, it's made it a little bit better. So hopefully now we can look at this team. We can look at a lot of these teams and be like, well, this team's capable. That team is capable. And also this team is capable as well. Now, I don't want to get too much into these trades as well because I want to save a lot of the talking for um, for, the, for the few days ahead to come. But what I can say is this is that we are looking at a season that is pretty much just going to be chaotic in terms, of, in terms of like the players who have signed there, the chemistry, what is going to happen halfway through the season. And of course, you know, when it hits the end of the season next year, Playoffs. We want to see what teams are capable of going all the way now. I think, you know, a lot of these um, signings and trades, they, it's made it harder for a lot of teams who are probably in the top five sort of rankings or maybe in the top eight sort of rankings. It's made it hard now. It's made it very hard. So, for a lot of teams, I think personally, um, you've pretty much got to do whatever you got to do to actually stay to stay healthy this offseason has actually been pretty much one of the best ones this within the last couple of years i know um, everybody spoke about uh when when lebron was in the when he was a free agent and stuff and whatnot but i think um now that Kawhi Leonard was a free agent he actually just held out he held out the lakers for so long that when he signed with the clippers lakers couldn't really sign anybody like whether you like it or not, it was a smart business move from Kawhi Leonard's end. Lakers couldn't get, really get anybody. The only person we could get was AD. That was it. Avery Davis. That's the only person we could get. So um, yeah, but um, 
this season has just actually shown me that wow that anything <laughs> anything can happen i'm still shocked and i'm pretty much just laughing about some of the trades and signings that's happened i'm just like this has really happened this is really what's going on and um i do see some of the i don't know some of you guys are probably I heard me just read out the, the deals and the money that these some of these players are getting and, I, and i'm sure some of you are thinking why would they get signed for that why would they sign for that much are these teams really losing their minds well teams will do anything if you've been effective in one season and you're going to another team they're gonna they're gonna make you sign for the max or you're, or you're going to sign for the match yourself and they they pretty much won't say anything i feel like some teams can't really look at it that way they can't look at it they can't look at it the way where oh well you know yeah he's had a good season but should we give him the max if you've got a cap space you might as well do it i know a lot of people were looking at al horford's um, contract and they were like what why is he getting that much money but it's the, it's the way he played last season he was a vital piece to that Celtics team. So i thought he would have stayed but i guess he wants to do something else with the Sixers. so it is what it is a lot of people spoke about kemba walker why is he getting that much money why is he getting paid this much you got to think about it. Boston is a team that rely on the point guard role. Kemba fits that role pr pretty well. And hopefully he can fit well into it once the season starts. So let's just see what happens throughout the season. Um, of, of Was these trades or signings even worth it? I do get, you know, like the money and everything. And the aspect of like maybe, you know, these players are... Not so much worth it, but let's just see what happens next season, because it's almost coming up soon. It's 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 pretty much August now, so we've only got like pretty much what two months left. So let's just see. So yeah, guys, I think I'm gonna leave it here. I know um, this podcast is pretty much short, but I just wanted I wanted to save it for part two. There will be a part two to this, and. Um, I will be discussing this amongst with uh, my friends as well. We will be discussing this very heavily, going into a lot of detail about certain trades and uh, certain signings onto certain teams and why they're not capable to win a playoff or make it into the playoffs. So with that being said, um, I'm going to leave it here. Don't forget to like, share, comment, subscribe. Also, just leave anything in the comment section. Just, um, so, you know, what's your view in the whole off season right now? And um, yeah, I'll pretty much see you for the next podcast. Peace.